this video, we're going to ask Jomoto san, the head of Spoon Sports, 30 of my most burning questions about the FL5 Civic Type R and Spoon's plans with the platform for the future. Spoon S2000 over here. It's been sitting here for a long time, just as it should. First thing you see when you come upstairs here at Spoon. For those of you folks who have not yet been to Spoon, this is definitely one of the must visit places for fans of JDM car culture. And the really cool thing is this facility functions as both a garage and a showroom. So you can just come up here and just hang out, check out the cars, say hi, and take off whenever you're ready. Oh. Hey, Jim, what's sound? Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you explain about the FL5, what's happening right now? Oh. Yeah, so uh, we are making uh, our own uh, base map for uh, Honda. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, uh, Honda stock ACU is uh, uh, American uh, data, so American gasoline is uh, octane is a little bit lower yep. than Japan. So uh, Japanese octane is a little bit high. So we need a uh, more tuning. Uh, I see. This car's ECU is uh, here, and uh, this ECU made by uh, Bosch. Bosch uh, ECU has uh, so many protection. Uh, so need a uh, uh, jailbreak. Yeah, jailbreak. Yeah. And the uh, customer uh, sent to us uh, to the ECU, uh, and uh, we uh, coding and uh, jailbreak uh, sent back to the customer, and uh, together uh, Honda. Oh. So uh, customer installed the uh, own ECU uh, after jailbreak, and I see. Uh, connect the Honda and the tuning. The customers who want to tune their FL5 yeah. to the Spoon spec, yeah. they need to come to Spoon and bring their ECU. Yeah. I see. Or uh, just send the only ECU. Uh, ECU yeah. unit. I see. Is each ECU a little bit different? Every ECU uh, immobilizer uh, oh. coding and uh, every ECU is uh, different. So I see. need to send own ECU. How about for the customers like in, in America and around the world who want the Spoon? Uh, uh, I think uh, American uh, uh, customer needs to use a uh, Honda American version uh, data. I see. Yeah, so this is uh, for uh, only for Japanese customer. So I think little by little, there's been a lot of evolution for this car. Yeah. So can you tell us about the different things that have okay. changed recently? Uh, this is a prototype uh, front lip spoiler. Yeah, it's already changed. Uh, First one is a FRP, yeah. But the, uh, this one is a carbon fiber, so it's a final prototype. Is there a release date yet? And hopefully uh, September or November. I see. Yeah, before SEMA. Okay. Yeah. And what else? Uh, air filter, the uh, ECU. And, and when do you think tuning will be finished? Uh, street version is a uh, eighty percent finished. We already have a downspring, ECU, air filter, exhaust, so uh, it's a street spec, 80% finish. So a few more months maybe? Yeah. Next step is uh, for our racing spec. I see. Well, we are making a racing car in uh, America and uh, in Japan. And we build uh, two cars. We need to develop uh, racing uh, items, coilover, aerodynamics. Can you tell us about the suspension setup of the that will be available for the customers? So, uh, should be this year. Okay. Yeah. And the coilover setup is in this car already? Uh, this is a uh, lower spring. Oh, lower yeah. spring. Yeah. yeah. How much does the spoon lowering spring uh, drop the car? 20 millimeter. Oh, 20 yeah, millimeter. 20 to 30. I see. Yeah. Some people feel there's the reverse rake. The back is a bit lower than, than the front. No, but... uh, Honda uh, Honda cars uh, fender uh, arch yes. is uh, front is uh, very high, so looks uh, rear is a uh, down. I see. Yeah, but uh, uh, we measure the jack point. Yeah, we made yep jack point to yes. ground. Uh, we measure the. Uh, here and the front is uh, too low <laughs> than the uh, rear. I see. Yeah. So uh, uh, of course, uh, looks is rear is very low. Yeah. But the uh, 
car's height is a uh, lower than uh, front is lower than rear. I see. By the way, yeah, with the new front lip, yeah. how much uh, less ground clearance is there? Minimum. Uh, lowest point is a uh, uh, subframe. Yes. So it's not the lowest point. Twenty or thirty millimeter uh, more lower than stop one. I see. Yeah, but the approach angle is a little bit uh, decrease. Yeah. But it doesn't thicker. actually stick out so much, actually. Stop one. Is, stop one is a uh, very uh, make an angle, uh, yes. approach angle. So more more higher uh, yeah. the stop one, but the, it's. Only a little bit uh, lower than uh, stock one. Ah, I see. Okay, okay, good to know. Good to know. I'm yeah. because yeah. I'm most worried about the hitting the front. Yeah, yeah. but uh, please take care. <laughs> yeah, so you still you do have to take care. Yeah, we know this has the 18 inch SW388s. Yeah, and this is uh, plus 40. 40. Yes. 40. Yeah, and uh, we will sell 90 inch. Ah, okay. Yeah, 90 inch and uh, 9.5. Uh, 45? 45. Kind of like a shack and stick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. And you don't have to roll the front and you can keep the stock alignment, right? Mm, you need to use a, a downspring. Ah, uh, I stock see. one is. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Just if, if, if it's the stock spring, it's a little bit out. A little bit. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes. So if it's the stock spring, then can you pull this alignment bolt? To, yeah, so to pull it up and uh, make a camber. About two degrees? Yeah. Okay. But if you have the down the down springs, yeah. then the natural camber will, will bring it in. No, almost a straight block. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, this uh, suspension uh, system is uh, not to big change the camber angle. That's really good to know and I'm looking forward to the 19 inch version. I feel like this car looks best with the 19 inch wheels. Mm -hmm. yeah. 18 inch looks a little bit like 16 inch on the S2000. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, so uh, in the race rack, uh, need a uh, uh, higher height. Ah, yeah, yeah. The 19 wall. inch is uh, two, uh, two thin. Yep. Yeah, 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 two thin. So uh, 19 inch is a uh, steering information is uh, not so good and the tire is uh, one part of a suspension system yep. so tire needs more uh, bounce ah yeah. it's I the see. same as a spring yeah so 19 inch is a uh, uh, very uh, stiff yeah so tire needs a uh, more bounce i see i see and this car is also running the rigid collar, right? So yeah. it feels very, very smooth now. Interior-wise, this has the yeah, back spoon bucket seat, seat and, and also the new, right. the new one for the for the wife, for the partner. So yeah. They don't complain. It's yeah, good, good for a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. And the back has the wing. Everyone is very, very curious about this yeah, this so, wing. Uh, we are making the uh, another version. It looks almost the same. Uh, this wing is uh, too much work. Oh. Too much downforce. Yeah, so we are making the, another version. So is it the top speed decreased too much? Yeah, cornering is uh, uh, stable, uh, but uh, too much function. Ah, I yeah. see. It's, it's actually too yeah. powerful. Uh, less downforce version. I see. Yeah. And this is running the N1 exhaust. Can we turn it on? Yeah. To hear the, the exhaust with... Does the tuning change the sound at all? Not so much. Okay. That sounds so good. What is the whistle sound? The whoosh? Oh, all stock. Yeah. By the way, uh, I think now some people are starting to use the FL5 for you know, taking to the track, mm -hmm. like in Willow Springs yeah. and around, especially in California, but it's very, very, very hot. Yeah. So do you have any any recommendation for cooling? We are making a radiator right now. So to change the lid. This is, okay, I see. Yeah, uh, heat is shield uh, anywhere. <laughs> 
Yep. Oh, you need to heat shield everything. Yeah. yeah. So like all uh, the piping is all heat shielded. Satellizer and the top charger yep. are always heat. Yep. Yeah. So then, yeah, and uh, some you know, water hose and the uh, intake air uh, yep. very close uh, uh, heating uh, area. Even here, heat right? Heat shield. So how much does the heat shielding help? Like how many degrees can, uh, can maybe people... a few degrees? Few degrees, that's yeah. a lot actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, we did a uh, race uh, for a very uh, long time, yep. so we know the uh, it's very important for the uh, protection of the heat. I see. Yeah. So after dial test, it's uh, only one or two degree, but uh, long long time driving is a. Uh, you know, Little bit function, no heat shift part, and the heat shift part a uh, little bit more fast. I see. So heating issue is a uh, fail safe. So uh, power is gone. Protection the heating mm -hmm. is uh, not uh, drop the power. Yeah, and it's very very easy and cheap modification you can do yeah. for by so, yourself yeah. for a few so, dollars. Uh, tuning is uh, not change the. Uh, Ident tuning is a protection or for the car. This car already has good performance. Yes. So our aim is to uh, keep the performance. Because the heat will decrease the performance. The, yes. the computer will decrease performance by 50%, lose yeah. 50 horsepower because it's overheating. Yeah. I see. Yeah, so spoon style is uh, keeps the performance, uh -huh. not increase the power. I see. So the idea is keep the performance so it can run longer. Yes. I see. Okay. So a uh, small tune is uh, small yeah, tune. like you did from my S thousand with with the radiator. Yeah, I remember yeah, this that. Is, uh, yeah, air uh, air comes from here. Yeah, and uh, basically it doesn't have uh, this wall. Yep, I see. By the way, I was curious. So in in the stock bumper, yeah, this uh, actually is it is nothing, right? This yeah. does not it doesn't do anything. This does work. Yes. But if this is cut, will it blow air into the wheel well? To no, uh, it has a uh, fender liner. Yes, yeah. but if you cut the fender liner, and then mm -hmm. if you made a hole here. Maybe if, if make a hole, yep. and they need to make a uh, wheel. Ah, yeah. Yeah, tunnel. Yep. Yeah, so uh, if it, it has a uh, uh, the cooling load. Yes. Uh, Air is a uh, blown from here. Yep. But uh, just making the hole is a uh, uh, almost doesn't do as a uh, parachute. Oh, uh, just, I see. <laughs> just parachute effect. Yeah. I yes. see. So actually, does this duct into the brake? Yes. Okay. So already it's a brake duct. Yeah. Yeah. But for example, could this, if this is piping, could it blow into here? Could Should you make it blow uh, into here? For a while. I don't know what what is the best function. Yeah, so uh, come through here and uh, make a, a oil cooler. Yeah, and, uh, cooling, uh, cooling. Yeah, that's uh, what I was thinking. Yeah. I thought maybe it's it's stock, it's not functional, but it yeah. could be cut. Yeah. Yeah. We will make a duct or bumper yeah. or something. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you you're already planning the bumper? Yeah. Uh, front and rear bumper or just the front? Just front. Just front. Yeah, because the rear is already good. Uh, Diffuser? Uh, no, uh, brand spot information sensor. Oh, it's it's this thing, right? This this thing? No, uh, this thing inside. Oh, okay. Inside of bumper. Yep. And the uh, brand spot information sensor uh, needs a, a good surface uh, for the bumper. So oh, okay. Outside and the inside. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and, uh, need to keep the thickness and the uh, surface yeah so frp uh, is a, a different fix and the surface is a uh, very bad so i think uh, frp is uh, difficult to make a rear bumper i see i see how about the side are you thinking about because this can be removed right that can be changed yeah so. but the uh, I think it's enough. The shape is already yeah. like that, right? It looks too aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was thinking, for example, this is just yeah. elbow suggestion. 
But for example, you see here on, on the end plate on the wing, yeah. it goes out like this. Yeah. So I thought maybe here, if it goes out a little bit more, just a little bit more, and then if this could be carbon, mm. so it can match the front, uh, yeah. that would be really, really cool, actually. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or for example, like maybe it comes out here, and then also on the front here, yeah. like that. Yeah. This is my aerodynamic suggestion. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's going to be helpful, but yeah. just my suggestion. Uh, we're uh, planning to make more parts uh, for the racing. So uh, we're uh, going to uh, race uh, next year in the Super Taikyu uh, oh, okay. in Japan. And also uh, this year's uh, Sunday Hill 25 hour race. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, uh, November. So I need to go to America to build a race car. What a hard, difficult yes. life. Yeah. I think everyone's really looking forward to both the street spec or FL5 yeah. and also the racing spec. Do you yeah. think the racing spec will be only like ECU or will there be like, other aero parts that are completely different? Uh, first, first step is uh, almost the same looks. Yeah, just change the color. Yeah, so we need a uh, education uh, yeah. for the, this car. Where is a uh, broken and uh, where is a uh, good point? We don't know uh, this car. We need to know everything. After two years, we will professional for the this car. Is it quite different from FK8? What is mm. the major improvements and what are the reasons to buy this car over like FK8? Base car is a uh, not so big change. But uh, this is a next generation chassis. Suspension type is uh, almost the same, but uh, everybody know EG and EK. Suspension system is uh, almost the same, but the uh, next generation EK is a very good car. Yep. So it's the same thinking. I see. Yeah, so of course, and this car uh, more wide and yep. more low. So corner, uh, cornering is uh, faster than previous model. So this car is a tunneling car. Ah, yeah. I see. Yeah, engine is uh, almost same. Engine transmission, yeah. And gear ratio is a uh, difference, but uh, almost same. So just change the gear, it's the same uh, engine. Ah, yeah. yeah, power unit, same, but in chassis is a uh, next generation. Yeah, so uh, this car is uh, faster than uh, FK. I see. How much percent do you think overall FK FL5 is better than FK8? Uh, just image <laughs> for me is a yep. uh, 20 percent. 20 percent. Yeah. Because many FK8 owners they really like the looks and design of, of FK8, and if they want to bring FK8 to the same level of performance as as the FL5. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, uh, FK8 already uh, have uh, so many uh, power up unit uh, tuning menu. So uh, uh, upgrade turbocharger and the fuel, up, uh, fuel upgrade system. So uh, it's easy to increase the power, and uh, we can change uh, tire size. And so FK8 is uh, 245, but the uh, our yeah. Right? yeah. So FK8 uh, use uh, uh, can use a uh, 265 uh, size. Yeah. So uh, uh, using the same tire size and the increase the power is uh, uh, almost the same level uh, for the FL5. If yeah. if the stock FL5 and stock FK8 like race in in a straight line, it seems like maybe FK8 is a little bit faster. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, is the gear way? ratio. Oh, gear ratio. Yeah, okay. gear ratio is a little bit lower uh, as a FK8. Yeah. Yeah. So FL5 is a high ratio. ratio. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe uh, top speed is a uh, good as a FL5. I see. Yeah, but uh, uh, just straight performance. Yeah, straight yeah. and the uh, uh, signal start. Yep. It's a uh, FK8 is a little bit fast. But what about in the track? 
because you need a different gear ratio for the different corners, uh, right? Any race track is uh, different, but the race track uh, lap time is a big function for the tire size. Stock FK8 is a 245. Stock FL5 is a 265. So it's a very big difference. So uh, FL5 is uh, faster than FL FK8. Because the cornering potential is yes. a lot better with the 265 tires. Yes. Ah, I see. Thank you. That's very deep explanation because many people are very curious why yeah, yeah, yeah. FK8 is faster off the line than, than FL5. One more question I had was in FK8 generation, it was assembled in England. Yeah. But now the FL5 is assembled in uh, Saitama yeah. on a Japanese plant. A lot yeah. of the components are still from America. The engine is made in Ohio. Yeah. And the different parts are made across the world. But I feel like being assembled in Japan, maybe there's a small improvement in the overall quality. But what do you think? Yeah, of course, uh, <coughs> maybe in Japan, this uh, quality is the uh, uh, highest uh, of the world uh, because uh, Honda is a Japanese country company. Yori Automobile Plant Saitama Factory features Honda's most advanced production. Civic Type R vehicles destined for customers worldwide are developed and produced in Japan by our dedicated engineers. Many people would say the process is the same in Honda factory, yeah. but what is where does the difference come from? Honda factory guys uh, have a pride. Yodi Automobile Plant has always leveraged the latest in advanced automated processes. Our goal was to respect that history while conveying the essence and heritage of Civic Type R. So Japanese factory guys lead a diagram, but they made exactly the same as a diagram. Yeah, diagram has a minimum to maximum and a range. range. Yeah. But Japanese guys uh, want to make a exactly oh, a center. Oh, I see, I yeah. see. So the tolerance is lower. The accepted tolerance in, in Japan is, yeah. is lower. After hand finishing by our mold experts, they're ready for pressing Type R panels with existing equipment. The Yori Automobile Plant is the sole facility entrusted with production of the new Civic Type R. We take great pride in delivering this automobile to our customers worldwide. That's very interesting. Yeah. So this is just my opinion, but I feel kind of like the Japanese thinking is a little bit different. The process is exported to America, but the thinking like Nihonji no Kangaikata is a little bit different. Yes. So uh, Japanese factory guys, image is a uh, shopping. Japanese uh, shopping spirits calls uh, good uh, products. To honor the Civic Type R development concept, we created a new suspension production process. Two associates, positioned to the right and left, handle the entire process from start to finish. Together, they create the suspension for each car, minimizing variation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the deep look at the FL5. I'm very excited. I was yeah. really hoping we could drive this today, but we'll be driving the FL1, which I'm still excited about. So. Uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in the adventure with this, I have a separate video because this whole interview became like a 30 minute chat with Tomoko-san. So please make sure to watch the other video where we take the FL1 on an adventure with some of my friends. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. All right. And thanks for watching.